What's going on everyone? Moose here, Air Guns of Michigan. We are back out at the range with our Crate X. And um, so a few things have changed with this gun. One, I've got the, I have done a little bit of tuning. Um, the other thing I found was that it seems to enjoy the heavier slugs a little bit more than the lighter weight stuff. Um, now I didn't go into super in-depth tuning of the gun, but, excuse me, I did, uh, I did play around with it enough that, you know, I kind of gave it a pretty good swing. Um, I'm shooting roughly uh, 980 uh, with the Zahn projectiles. These are 28 grain, uh, 217s. Yep, 28 grain, 217s. Um, R11 for Zan if he wants to uh, know which ones I'm shooting. Um, but uh, I've got a full mag here. We're going to do a full mag um, just shooting. And uh, I've got the chronograph running. I want you guys to be able to hear the uh, shots. Um, obviously, I had to set up the cameras, things like that. So the, the gun's just been sitting. Um, we do have the Tacticam um, um, camera going. We've got the Luminex. And then we got a new scope from Discovery Optics. And let me just say this. While I know that Discovery Optics is a is known for their air gun scopes per se. They've really stepped up their game with this ED PRS series scope. Um, these, I don't remember the exact cost, um, but I'll put a link down below if you guys wanna check them out. Um, turrets are incredibly precise. Zero stop works great. Um, everything seems to be exact. Um, I've got my, um, my parallax wheel set at 100, I'm at 100, and it is spot on. Spot on, guys. Uh, illuminated reticle, ED glass, like I said. It's a 5 to 25 by 56. Um, uh, side focus, uh, um, illuminated reticle, 34 millimeter scope. It is just absolutely outstanding for the money. This is a great, great optic. And even for more money, it's a great optic. So let's stop talking. Let's start shooting and uh, let's see what kind of uh, stuff we're getting and what kind of groups we're getting. I'm going to go with the uh, upper right target over there and let's see what we got. Uh, another thing I wanted to point out about the... Um, the crate is there's a they have a built-in thumb shelf on their grip and let me just tell you thank you great job all right 977 976 86 so that first shot was a little low 986 That was the wind. There's a good breeze coming across down there. I can see it in the trees. That's it. There's no more left. Yep, that's it. So, let's take a look at that. So, that was a standard deviation of 2.5 with a spread of 9. That was 16 shots. Um, so, I would say not bad. Not bad at all. To be honest with you, I, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Um, even for letting the gun sit. For roughly 10 minutes, I'm over at my buddy's house, and he came out. We talked for a second as I was getting all the cameras set up and everything. Um, so the gun was just sitting here by its lonesome. And, um, you know, I would say that, man, that just isn't bad. That just isn't bad. So, um, 
Yeah, I'm going to take it. And, uh, I, you know, I really enjoy shooting the Zahn uh, projectiles. Um, the 28 grains, like I said, seem to do a little bit better. Um, I've got some, uh, I was shooting knockouts uh, the other day, and um, I had it turned down a little bit, and then I kind of started messing around. I kind of lost my tune, so I was like, well, it's a good time now then to practice with the Zahn, see what they can do, and uh, voila. I mean, that's not bad for cold weather you know i mean i'm out here just you know shooting and having fun haven't really micro micro tuned it or anything like that so there's still a lot of tunability that can be done to this gun uh you know we can certainly increase the reg shoot it a little bit faster see what it does and um, but that's the fun of making all these videos right is to get you guys coming back for more so uh next time we come out you know i'll, I'll do a little bit more pre-tuning before i shoot my next video on the Cradex. we'll get the thing really dialed in i'll tell you everything i did what projectiles i'm shooting uh things like that um i did go ahead and swap out my uh, cocking lever to the right hand side it's a very very simple process guys it doesn't require tearing apart the gun and all that it's really simple to do um, i have not however swapped my um my uh, safety to the other side uh, and just just because i just didn't not not because it's hard uh, basically uh star bit pulls out pull that flip them around the other side star bit them back together and now you got a thumb flipper on the other side um, so I just keep it over here because it seems to work pretty well for me uh, when I'm getting ready uh, to shoot I can just knock the safety with my thumb does everything it should um, the gun is tethered You know obviously you guys can see that but I want to make something very clear about tethering and, and it's a very common misconception in a unregulated gun having a um, tethering system does actually Im impact the um, shooting of the gun but in a regulated gun it in fact does not all i'm doing is supplying a constant 3000 psi to the gun the regulator is only at 100 and like 50 bar so i'm not even i'm not i'm not below that regulator pressure i'm above it and so all i'm doing is just supplying the gun with a solid flow of air which does not affect how my groups are going to be downrange. now it would if i was doing a long or shot string but this gun is definitely capable of shooting one full magazine above reg so it's not it's not an impacting thing and and i know that that's confusing and i get the confused people on my channel sometimes that are making comments like well you had it tethered i wonder how it would do without well there's your answer uh, i'm not uh, it's not a it's not a bonus to have a gun that is regulated on a tethering system other than the fact that i don't have to keep stopping and refilling my gun during all of my shooting and everything else um, so like I said, we just shot one magazine. This gun is 100% capable of shooting two or three magazines uh, on a single charge. So, um, you know, just want to kind of throw that out there so I don't get a bunch of hate mail or, you know, hater comments. You know, I mean, I get it. You know, it, it can be confusing when you're in this uh, and you're new to this or, or you hear somebody say, well, tethering makes a difference. No, it does in an unregulated gun, right? If I had an unregulated gun and I was tethered, it is going to impact it. Like my um, Air Force Texans, for example. Uh, having them tethered is going to give it a different outcome than if it was not tethered because you're always shooting at a constant um, pressure. Uh, but with, like I said, with a regulator, the bottle is going to hold more than 3,000 PSI. So, and my reg is only, like I said, at 150 bar. So, you know, we're, we're well below that. Um, but anyway, with that being said, um, I'm Moose. This is Air Guns of Michigan. I certainly appreciate you guys hanging out. If you would, do me a favor. Give this video a thumbs up. Not another favor. If you're not subscribed, do me a favor. Subscribe. It's kind of funny. Like Two-thirds of my views are people that are not subscribed to my channel. And I don't know if it's just that you've never signed up for YouTube. But having an account on YouTube isn't like, you know, like they're not going to infiltrate you. You just simply use an email address just to sign up. And uh, it, it'll inform you if you so choose on new videos through your email. Uh, but you can always turn that off. Tell it, I don't want notifications. And then 
and you'll never hear from them. But it does allow you to subscribe to channels. It does allow you to thumbs up. It does allow you to comment, uh, things like that as well. So um, if you guys were ever wondering why you can't comment and you can't thumbs up and you can't do that, that's why. Um, so anyway, with that being said, I'm Moose. I appreciate you guys and hope to see you guys again soon. And uh, we'll talk to you guys all next time. Till then, be good to each other and God bless.